Simon Says is the 21st episode of the fifth season of Cheers. This is directed, of course, by the wonderful James Burroughs. And as always, there will be spoilers from now as I go through the episode chronologically and share some thoughts. In general, it's a brilliant episode, but it's not perfect. It got a little bit repetitive at one point. I feel like there's one scene in this that just didn't need to be there. I don't know what I would, would have wanted to have seen in its place, but aside from that, it is pretty brilliant, and I will mention that scene when we get there. It starts off quite delightfully and a little atypically, because Norm is leaving Cheers, which in itself is unusual, but he's actually going to a health club, because Vera got him it as a, as a gift, <laughs> or a subtle hint, and maybe not so subtle. Nice way to start things off. And then we kick off with the main narrative and Frieder comes in waiting for his friend, Dr. Finch Royce. Diane immediately recognises the name. She's rather excited. And then in he comes. He's played by John Cleese and he greets Fraser by singing Three Little Maids from School Are We. Fraser echoes this. And it's, it's a delightful way to introduce the character. Carla flirts with him a little bit. Fraser introduces him to everybody. Everybody's there. And everybody seems to hound around him. Even Cliff is, is trying to have his attention. Diane asks for a session or two with him, and he agrees, and Fraser actually says, I'll, I'll give you that as a wedding gift. I will pay for it as a wedding gift, which I thought was really thoughtful. It's a pretty substantial gift for Fraser to give Sam and Diane, considering what Diane had previously done to Fraser at their own wedding. So Fraser in that moment seemed like a pretty decent person, as he often does, of course. Norm then calls over Cliff in a rather delightful way by saying, Cliffy, Cliff, that's a gentleman over here who thinks you know absolutely nothing about photosynthesis. And of course, Cliff cannot bear to accept that. So off he goes. And then that leaves Simon or Dr. Finch Rice to go and give Diane and Sam their, their session in Sam's office. And we have a brilliant quote that I love. And he says, it's only from our failures that we gain knowledge, which I love. That's not 100% true. There are other ways of gaining knowledge. But I really did like the sentiment there. And he asks them to share their, their stories. Diane goes back to the womb. Sam goes back to his baseball days. He then presents them with some scenarios. And I just want to make it clear that I don't care how renowned he is, how experienced he is. I don't think it is possible to determine whether two people should or shouldn't get married based on two questions. And he asks them what they do in these scenarios. One involves Sam ogling somebody in a bikini and whether he'd tell Diane his thoughts. And the other involves Diane finding that Sam is not very satisfactory in bed on their wedding night and whether or not she'd tell Sam that. And I, <laughs> I loved Sam's response when Simon said... And Sam has not performed to your satisfaction because obviously Sam could not even comprehend that. And Simon comes to the conclusion that, and I quote, you two should not only not get married, you should never see each other again. Diane's face pretty much said it all at that point and she was so outraged that once he'd left she referred to him as a sack of fish and chips. He's English so <laughs> I found that to be an absolutely brilliant insult and then Diane thinks it's a test. He said those things to see how they as a couple would survive if somebody tells them they're not meant to be together. I didn't necessarily think that that was the case but if that made Diane feel better and she'd left it at that, that could have been fine. But she's not happy with that. So she actually turns up at his hotel. We have a brief moment alone with him, with Simon, while he's on the phone, <laughs> talking about that pompous twit Fraser Crane, which I love. And then Sam and Diane turn up and he confirms it wasn't a test. You two are an accident waiting to marry. He's not very sensitive with the way he says things. And Sam, when they come back, starts to think maybe he's right about this. And that, to me, is a problem. Because as soon as Sam starts to accept what somebody else is saying, that's planting a seed of doubt. And I don't like that. And this is really the first time since the proposal, well, since the last proposal, the most recent proposal, where we see Sam even slightly thinking that this isn't a good idea. And it makes me feel uneasy, makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't remember how I felt about this episode the first time I watched it. But 
watching it now when I know what happens going forward, I think it's probably a different experience. And while I think this is a, a generally a well done episode, I will talk about a, an aspect I didn't care for in a moment. But even with that in mind, even though I think it's a, a good episode, I don't like it because of how it makes me feel. And I don't like how it's making Diane feel either because she's really, really concerned about this. Is she thinking too much about somebody else's opinions? Yes, but it is somebody she re she respects. And she thinks up until this point, at least, she thought that he was somebody whose opinion actually mattered and certainly mattered to her. And that's causing her problems. She then realizes that he based his his feedback on dishonest answers. At least she admits that she hadn't answered his question honestly. And <laughs> Fraser in this moment I rather loved. Fraser, I wasn't initially sure where Fraser was going with this, but he very enthusiastically tells them to go back to the hotel and tell Simon that they hadn't been honest and get him to reassess the situation. And once Sam and Diane leave, we realize it's because Fraser had paid $1,500 for this and he's going to inconvenience the doctor as much as he can, which I thought was rather delightful. Diane and Sam then go back to the hotel and Diane said something that I didn't love. And then we, for a second time, see Sam responding in a way that's a little bit awkward, but understandable because Diane says to, to Simon, sometimes it takes Sam two hours to come up with his first thought. And Sam replies, I don't appreciate that. And I'm not saying he's not valid in feeling that way, but here we have them not showing a united front. Here we have Sam openly admitting to not being completely in agreement with Diane. And I don't like this. I don't like this in the slightest. And they end up leaving again. And then they come back again. And this time, this is the scene that I think added nothing. I don't really feel like we needed this moment. We have a scene after this, which we could have kind of merged the two together. Because in this scene, they come back from the library. Diane has been crying. She's clearly desperate. She clearly values other people's opinions and needs other people's validations which is kind of thought-provoking why does she need somebody else to tell her that she and Sam are meant to be together considering she has been so certain from day one that they are destined to be together is it just because of who Simon is or is it because they're getting closer to the wedding is she having doubt is she needing somebody else to tell her it's the right decision I don't know I don't have an answer to that I don't know how I feel about that, but it certainly made me question this. They leave again, and then they come back. And I feel like that made it feel just a little bit too repetitive. By the fourth time, the knock on the door stopped being funny. And I feel like either we needed something else in place of the previous visit, or they should have just merged them together, because there wasn't really any time passing between them. And Simon has completely had enough of the situation. And I have to say, his responses to everything, very, very funny. And he decides to declare that they're perfect together. And he puts it on record. And he gives this, John Cleese gives this amazing, amazing performance. So, so well done. And we end the episode with Diane smiling. And all she says to Sam is, see, she got the validation. She got what she wanted. And... That in itself is a huge concern that she wouldn't let this rest until Simon said that they were destined to be married and destined to live a long, happy life together. And as I said, I'm not 100% sure if I believe that that's just because of how highly she regards Simon or if it's because they're getting closer to the wedding day. And I'm not necessarily suggesting she's beginning to doubt the decision, but maybe she needs other people, people she trusts, people whose opinions she thinks are are worth anything in particular. Obviously, Carla says they shouldn't get married. She doesn't care about that. But with people like Dr. Finch-Royce, she, she does appreciate their opinion and does value it a lot. So maybe she is needing other people, people she would deem to be peers. They might not deem her to be peers, but people she thinks are on the same academic wavelength to her, she needs their approval. And Again, I don't love it. I, I, I'm not a fan of 
how this episode makes me feel. That's not because it's a badly done episode. It absolutely isn't, apart from that one scene that I feel was unnecessary. But it's because I don't like how it's making me feel about Sam and Diane. It's, I don't like how it's making me feel about how they're behaving as a unit and how they're behaving independently of each other. And I, I don't like it. So it, it's a difficult one to assess because on the one hand, generally a very well done episode with some really great moments. Frasier was absolutely fantastic. But at the same time, as a fan of Sam and Diane, it's uncomfortable. But that being said, it's still pretty great. Simon Says obviously still has some pretty brilliant moments. <laughs> 